Everyone, remain calm. Back for more, huh? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ah. That's how it always starts. But then later, there's running and then screaming. Somebody talk to me. What is happening? Welcome. Jurassic World. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Jurassic Park Podcast. How long is it going to take for that to spread around the globe? <laughs> this was all John Hammond's dream. Hold on to your butt. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 203rd episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Jost, and we're here to discuss all things Jurassic Park. In this episode, we're going to head to the tower. We're going to boost that signal and relay all the latest news and community topics inside the Jurassic Wire. Aaron Byer and I will tackle some of the most recent news and rumors, and of course, we're going to spotlight a member of the community. So, of course, we hope you like everything featured in the 11th iteration of the Jurassic Wire. Man, 11. We've done this 11 times already, man. That's pretty great. All debates and conversations in this segment are our own opinions and insights from things that we've seen in the news and around the community. Stay tuned to the beginning of the segment to hear exactly what we'll be discussing. I love The Wire, guys. I really love The Wire. It's always so much fun. And today, uh, yeah, we ranted. We, we went on some big rants. So stay tuned for that. But before we get into that mess, let's go ahead and take care of some business. Over on our YouTube page, we uh, released a few videos last week. Make sure to check out our review and unboxing of the Siloris figure. That is one that I have mispronounced time and time again, but I think I've got it right now, and I think a lot of people like that video. It was pretty fun. Um, such a cool figure, man. That was such a colorful thing, and it looks like a bird. It's really, really awesome. Um, I also did a live stream um, on Wednesday, last Wednesday, with my buddy Aaron Beyer. You know, we uh, before we decided to record The Wire, I kind of threw it out there that, hey, man, do you want to go ahead and try to do something live on YouTube together? And we did, and we uh, recorded some of the topics that you'll hear today here in the in the Wire segment. But uh, we did we did it a little bit differently, so it's not like literally the same product on YouTube and and here on the podcast. It's slightly different. Plus, the podcast version has a lot more. We go into a lot more detail. Um, the, the live stream was a little bit shorter. It was like 40 minutes compared to today's longer episode, but, um, it was awesome. It was great. And we got to comment on people's, you know, questions and concerns at the end of the video. So check that one out because we're going to start doing more stuff like that. Hopefully we can do more wires, um, live on YouTube eventually. That would be a real fun project if we can get that working. Um, so check that one out. That was a blast. Also we did, um, which one was it? Part six, I believe. <laughs> Part six of Tom Fishenden's Claire Sanctuary playthrough. That thing is really cool. I'm, I'm loving everything he's doing over there with that game. Um, it looks like it's pretty difficult for the most part. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like watching with part of my eyes covered because I still haven't gotten the chance to play it myself. But I still think it's a cool experience to see somebody else play through this, see those struggles. So maybe when I take my chance... Uh, maybe it won't be so bad, <laughs> but um, go ahead and check out part six of uh, Tom's playthrough there. So that's pretty cool. And we also did upload last week's episode um, over the weekend uh, here on YouTube or over on YouTube. So go check that out as well. This week, we have a bunch of fun stuff coming for you guys. I've been scheduling a lot of stuff in advance here. So the first video you're going to see this week is a merch hunt. So I go out to Target and I try to track down some stuff. We'll see if I come across anything Jurassic or maybe just some dinosaur stuff in general. Maybe just maybe just dinosaur stuff. <laughs> There's some good stuff out there. So check out that video. Um, on Wednesday, we're going to have, uh, what is it? I think it's a Jurassic World live tour video for you guys. So I'm still, you know, continuing to pump out some Jurassic World live tour content for you guys. So we're actually going to be doing... Um, Uh, one of the press day videos. So we're actually going to showcase the full presentation that they gave us um, with Madison Embry. She's the uh, star of Jurassic World Live Tour playing Dr. Kate Walker. And uh, she introduces the um, puppet animatronic figures of Genie and Blue. So you get to see them in action, kind of meeting up with people, myself, and uh, just her little spiel about the show and stuff. So go check that out because I think it's going to be pretty fun. 
Um, and we have a lot more content for that coming pretty soon. Um, even more from press day and stuff, so keep your eyes peeled. But um, then we're going to follow that up with Tom Jurassic's more uh, more content from him, Part 7. So make sure to watch Part 7 of that, and we'll have... Um, uh, I believe we should have this episode on Saturday as well. So yeah, that's about it over on YouTube. I did want to throw another shout out to Tom because he wrapped up his three-part series asking a paleontologist, um, you know, because we reached out to everybody and and asked everybody to submit questions about, you know, uh, their concerns and questions for a paleontologist, Dr. David Button from London's Natural History Museum. And he actually got around to answering as much as he possibly could in three installments. And the third one finally uh, showed up on our website last week. So go check that out because um, he got really in depth, like really, really in depth with stuff. And we've never done that here on the podcast. We've never gotten all that in depth. We've had a, a few actual like people that study this stuff and are into this stuff. But outside of that, it really hasn't been a common occurrence. And I'm sitting here mispronouncing dinosaur names left and right. So it's about time we uh, get some pros over here. And Dr. David Button is one of those guys. So he is uh, answering some great questions over there. So go check out that article from last week. And uh, this week, we should have another great article from Tom. So keep an eye out on our website as well. And of course, I do want to mention our Running Universal discount code. So if you guys are signing up uh, for the Running Universal event where you get to run through the park itself, through Universal Studios Hollywood, uh, you can run through the park, through the Jurassic section, through the backlot area on November 16th and 17th. You can use our discount code JPPOD10 for 10% off your 5Ks and 10Ks. Um, This does not include the Kids 1K. And it does not include team member prices or annual pass holders. So if you uh, if you want to use that code, go ahead. JPPOD10. Take 10% off on us. That's great. I'm not much of a runner, but I would I would certainly use that just to go ahead and like walk through the park. Um, I think that's an experience alone. If you pay for that registration, you get in there, you'd be able to just, just leisurely take your own pace. Because you get to go certain places and, and pathways that you just don't necessarily always get to walk or, or you know, just to take your time and view. So I think this is a very cool experience, and uh, it comes with some cool perks and whatnot. So yeah, I mean, just go ahead, use that code JPPOD10 for 10% off. We're not going to be covering the news this week because The Wire essentially covers as much news as we possibly can. If there was anything over the weekend, I'm sorry I missed it. I recorded this a little bit early. I think you guys understand, right? It's okay. We'll get to it all eventually. Why don't we go ahead and get this episode kicked off, though, with the 11th iteration of the Jurassic Wire. The debate over Isla Nublar rages on. They're taking no chances of a repeat of the San Diego incident. I'm talking about man-made cataclysmic change. The U.S. Senate has convened a special committee to answer a grave moral question. Roger that. Air one, clear for takeoff. Begin tracking. Copy that. Go, go! Tracking on it. Welcome, everybody, to the Jurassic Wire. I'm Brad Jost, and my co-anchor for this program is Aaron Beyer. The Jurassic Wire is a segment here on the Jurassic Park podcast where we discuss all the latest news on the Jurassic saga and the latest conversations in the Jurassic community. Today, we're going to be discussing Battle at Big Rock, Lego Jurassic World, Legend of Isla Nublar, the Brachiosaurus controversy strikes again, The Jurassic World miniature game, and we have a community spotlight. So before all that, let's welcome in Aaron. How's it going, dude? I'm pretty good, man. How's it going yourself? I'm doing good. Uh, I feel like this this time around, it was like, what can we scrounge up? Because it's been a little quiet for the most part, I feel like, um, outside of like, where are things? But um, I feel like outside of that, it's been fairly quiet in the Jurassic uh, realm. It's been slow, and I... I mean, we're in the middle of a three year gap between uh, films like <laughs> it. Yeah, it's been slow. It feels like a lot of the news. You're right. It's it's just people wanting things and like random tweets that aren't really revealing in any way. Um, it's been so... a lot. There's been a lot of little things and a lot of things coming out. Like, don't get me wrong. We've had a ton of stuff 
but it hasn't i feel like we we need something big and and big to discuss and talk about um there's been a lot of controversies over the past few months and and different things to discuss here in the in the wire of course but um I'm feeling like it's slow just right now. So hopefully uh, we can stir up some more controversies for you guys um, with everything that we're talking about here today. I've got some fun stuff. No follow-ups, I don't think, from uh, last time around. So hopefully we're as accurate as possible, (laughs) which I don't know if that's always uh, accurate. (laughs) Eh. So first off, we have Battle at Big Rock. This is everybody's favorite conversation, I feel like, right now. (laughs) It's like the number one go-to thing to talk about. Where is it? What's going on? Are we going to see this thing? I mean, maybe we might see I mean, it. You know what my answer is to that, which is like, what are you talking about, man? I have no clue what you're talking about because <laughs> nothing has officially been announced. Like there's not been an official announcement for this project. So everyone's all up in arms that like it wasn't in front of Hobbs and Shaw. Well, no one ever said it was going to be. Everyone just got hyped up for something. The only official the only official confirmation we have are toys that leaked or shouldn't even leaked. I obviously this is a real project, right? Yeah. And something happened with the, and it got delayed and the toys came out battle at big rock and the project didn't hit. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's still not an official announcement from universal. That's just toys that came out. So no, I mean the entire leaked concept of this, this thing happening in the first place was, was leaked. It was never supposed to be talked about in, in public. Um, so there was a mistake. It was a, it was an honest mistake at some point down the line. Um, and then the toys coming out, which we assumed would have been timed with like their, their release, whatever it was going to come out with that never, that never hit any kind of mark. That was just like, even if it was supposed to be with Hobbs and Shaw, the toys were like three months early, like two or three months early for that. So that didn't happen on time. So, you know, if you're going to coincide it with anything, uh, you know, a mo- uh, a movie release or something would be great. Like, but that just didn't happen. And it's so weird because by the time Hobbs and Shaw was coming out, you know, Walmart is, is already clearancing these things. Like they already hit clearance, which was, it seems crazy, but I guess, you know, new stock is coming in all the time, but it just seemed crazy that this unannounced project that we know we have toys for, and we're speculating about what this project is. Um, they're, they're already like I, I forget what the the amount was, but it was like seven bucks or something that you could get these things for, which is just crazy. And and then Target started getting them, so finally Target caught up to everybody else, and they were they're holding these on the shelves now. We just recently saw that you know Target switched over uh, to a new setting um, on their shelves and everything. Mine has not changed yet. I keep going there all the time. Still no new stuff. Um, on the shelf is just the carryover from what they already had and a lot of missing spaces. There's just a lot of blank shelves. Um, but um, a lot of targets have had the, uh, what are we talking about? Battle of Big Rocks, uh, uh, Big Lo- uh, man, Big Rock stuff out there. So that's a good thing for, for target goers. Um, but uh, yeah, outside of that and knowing that these toys exist, knowing that a project exists called Battle at Big Rock, uh, no official, official announcement. but we did certainly get some hope, I would say at least, um, from yeah. Colin Trevorrow. Yeah, we got some hope here because Colin was re- re- uh, replying to some people on Twitter. The first one, which I have noticed here, um, was from at Hardline underscore Pro. The tweet has been deleted, uh, as far as I can tell. Um, not Colin's tweet. Colin's tweet is still there, but the original tweet that he was talking about um, was gone. So I forget honestly what that said outside of. Hey, where's this thing? And Colin said, I have sworn myself. Uh, I can't, I have like dy- dy- dyslexia or something. I can't read things in order. It's not a very, it's not a very good sentence. Like <laughs> I'll give you that. It, it's a tweet. It's not a great sentence. I have myself. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is weird. I have myself sworn to secrecy. The punishment would be severe. So I think, yeah, it was something along the lines of like, does universal have you sworn to secrecy about this project? And he is, he's basically saying, myself, I'm, I've done it to myself. This is my own problem. I'm going to have to punish myself if I ever talk about this thing. Um, so that's that's a, a slight confirmation that something something's there. Um, the next tweet here is from Glenn the Simple, as far as I can tell. Sorry if I butchered your name. Um, it says, at Colin Trevorrow. So I guess the project is still alive. 
Question mark. Um, Colin replied, never died. So that to me, like I had said before, is hopeful for something coming. You know, uh, no, no official official. You know, this is you can't really say this is official confirmation, but it is as far or as close as we can get to it at this point. Um, you know, the director, the overseer, the overlord of the Jurassic World series, Colin Trevorrow, Slightly confirming here that something exists and we, I guess, may see it if you read the context clues. But I got excited by this. These two tweets here. Yeah. And of course, he's sworn to secrecy. It's called NDAs. Um, (laughs) Yeah. You know, I signed an NDA when I walked into my job and I'm not allowed to talk about projects until the day of the movie's release. So I'm sure a lot of these other, you know, Obviously, Trevorrow is under some kind of NDA until they can officially announce something. Like, if you look at his tweets, he never once acknowledged uh, Battle at Big Rock. Like, he's like, oh, it never, did he say never died? Well, yeah. as far as that tweet is concerned, if it was never a real thing, then how can it ever die, you know? Um, yeah, that's fair. You could look at it that way. Like, Hey, it never (laughs) existed in the first place. So nothing ever died. So nothing ever died because it never (laughs) existed. Um, you know, and and being in the industry that I'm in, (laughs) I know that for a fact, nothing ever exists until there's an announcement. Um, and so I, I said in the live stream, like the, the vendors who broke this, this was, this is NDA breaking stuff. I'm at, like, if it was me at my job, I'd I'd have lost my job for sure. Um, I'm a little closer to the actual film than toy vendors are, but they're still vendors on the project. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know what happens to Mattel if there's a leak. I don't know if there's a penalty or if there's, you know, a slap on the wrist. I don't know. I can't imagine there's really too much uh, involved, but you know, this was a bummer. They shouldn't have said something. What last year? They shouldn't have said anything. It was uh this was at the beginning of this year at some point. Uh, I think it was like okay. February or so February or March around there. But um, yeah, it, it shouldn't have been released. Um, so if you, if, if, if like, say for instance, that never happened, right? We never heard about this well, until you still the toys, which would have been even well, more. Con- exactly. That's what I'm tr- trying to get at because it, it, say we didn't hear about it vocally from somebody at the toy fair. Um, goes a few months down the road. I think it was like April or May. Somebody found it on a shelf just randomly. I remember the hype surrounding that moment when somebody finally caught one in the wild. Um, so imagine if that was the first time, like, Oh my God, please get me these. I'm not going to get these in Canada. Like exactly. It was a big deal. And now you can get them on clearance on Walmart. It's like website. Yeah. Ugh. And and just imagine that was the first time we had ever heard about this project. That would have been very confusing. And you would have had no context. Maybe, you know, certain outlets or something would have talked about it. But, um, you know, just speculating at that moment, as seen in Battle at Big Rock. That's what it says on the box. So I think we would use our context clues pretty wisely. We'd be like, as seen in Battle at Big Rock. What is this? You know? Maybe we wouldn't have jumped to live action or, or something like that or, you know, something in lines with what, what we see in the films. But, you know, we have, uh, you know, Lego stuff. Maybe we would have thought that. Maybe we would think um, animated stuff because I, I don't think at that point we had heard about Camp Cretaceous no, we had just not. yet. Yeah, no. so maybe it would have been like, oh, my God, maybe this is an animated thing. Uh, Battle of Big Rock, that's, that's the show. Maybe we'll see it on Netflix. You know, and then they announced uh, Camp Cretaceous. So then we're like, wait, what's going on? But um, I think, yeah, that would have changed a lot if we had never heard about it originally, where it would be placed, where we'd see it, all that kind of stuff. So I don't know. But um, we at least have a glimmer of hope here that something is alive, unless you're Aaron and you're saying that the project never existed. So so therefore nothing ever died. (laughs) That's certainly one way to look at it. But I like to be hopeful. I'm trying to be hopeful here no, for the it's fans. Not, it's not that I'm not hopeful. I guess just <laughs> after be, working on like super top secret projects for so long, I've just, nothing exists until it's on the screen sure, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. So like, um, it's fun to speculate about, but we don't necessarily, we aren't owed this project. Um, there is other projects coming out, uh, albeit at a really weird schedule. Yeah, um, which is, yeah, and, our, our follow-up topic here, but. Um, yeah, but. I mean, we're, we're not owed this. It's nothing. It's not part of the, I mean, it's part of Canon. I'm I'm assuming unless it's animated, but I think even Camp Cretaceous is canonical. So 
Um, yeah, it's 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 just so weird that everyone's like, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And it's like we were kind of never given that this is a thing. I mean, other than badging on a box, which is yeah. very official. Oh, of course. Yeah. So I think there was a lot of despair, though, um, in the past few weeks or months or however long, you know, we, we see this thing, we see it clearanced, um, and we and we know that Hobbs and Shaw came and went and we never saw anything. So it's been a lot of like mass hysteria that nothing would nothing would come from this. Maybe it was canceled. Maybe we'll never see it. Um, a lot of talk about where we'll see it if it ever does hit. Um, but at least we have some sort of slight verification that, you know, he's swearing himself to secrecy about a project and something never died. So there's a glimmer of hope. But um, I want to follow that up with an opinion piece here from Jurassic Outpost um, and uh, a guest appearance by Big Time. We need a, we need like a, a nickname for for Tom Fish and then outside of Tom Jurassic. Um, that's just like, you know, that's his go-to name, but like, we need like big time, Tommy, big time. Do- there we go. That's it. You just big did it. Time, big time, Tommy, Tommy. Ooh, big time, Tommy, the fish, <laughs> big time, Tommy, the fish. Oh, like, Tommy, the fish, like man. Mafia name. Tommy, the fish. That's, what, that's hey, what he is. Big time. Tommy, the fish over here. He's got a great contributor article over on his, Jurassic outpost. Got his scoops. He's got. Big time report. Big time, time fish. Scoops. scoops. Yep. So this is treading into like my review territory over on YouTube. So, um, <laughs> but uh, Tommy Scoops over here, he, uh, whatever we called him, he uh, wrote up an article on Outpost. Um, and the important part that I wanted to showcase here was some information that Outpost has um, kind of talking about the budget. Um, no sources on this article. So I don't really know where the information is coming from. But um, it does say that uh, it's been reported to exceed this battle at Big Rock thing has been reported to exceed the $10 million threshold. So I guess that was the budget, $10 million. Um, It's exceeded that. It's gone beyond that. And maybe that's why it's been delayed here. And also maybe they wanted a more traditional route because it also says that here in the article. They want a more traditional content delivery method. So maybe they just don't want this you know, getting lost in front of Hobbs and Shaw. Um, yes, the audience is, you know, there's quite a bit of crossover there. But, um, you know, once people see Hobbs and Shaw, a lot of people just forget about what they saw, you know, the trailers, the other stuff. Um, you know, I think a lot of the uh, Pixar shorts tend to live on. You know, people remember those. But um, maybe they just wanted a place where they could release this, make back some of that $10 million plus budget. Um, that's what I mean, I'm thinking, maybe, at least. That's but- what it sounds like. When it says they wanted more of a traditional, that doesn't that kind of like tell you that this is not going to be on a streaming service? Because streaming services aren't considered traditional. That's yeah. I I mean that's kind of what I'm thinking. I, I anytime I've talked about this with anybody, it's like I've ignored streaming and and stuff like that for the most part. Outside of saying maybe we'll see it released on um, iTunes or or whatever, uh, whatever they call that these days. Um, you know, the, the youngins, the younglings, whatever they're calling do you, iTunes. Do you think we're in August now going into September? Do you think this could be like a, a Super Bowl commercial thing? Uh, like, um, that's, dude, that's pretty darn traditional. Like it is. Um, I You know, if 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 this article, which I mean, who knows what where they're getting the information from or what kind of source or confirmation it is on the traditional delivery method. Um, and the budget, but if they want to make back money from that budget, will they make back money by airing it on NBC? You know, I don't know what what game Thursday night, whatever NBC does. Well, no, because I, no I mean they would have to be selling something, right? Yeah. Like, if you're gonna make money back, you need to sell something. And what would Battle at Big Rock sell except for toys, toys. that came out this month ago? <laughs> go, go now to the your go, Walmart clearance bin. Get them for seven bucks. Um, or you, or you, there there are. <laughs> uh, see, I'll talk about this real quick. I don't have anything to say, but these. Uh, Takara Tommy uh, toys. I don't know if you've seen these, but they're miniature versions, very small versions of the Nasutoceratops and the Allosaurus. Um, they look pretty similar. The Allosaurus looks a little bit different, but the um, Nasutoceratops looks pretty spot on. But hey, you can buy those while you're at it. I guess. <laughs> cool. But yeah, I, I don't know what a uh, a TV spot. I think that's a great idea, you know, putting it at halftime or before the game or something like that. Great idea or Super Bowl, you know, um, you know, even because like 
when they, uh, you know, guaranteed this year, the first big game of the year or a big game of the year. Um, I don't watch football, guys. I I sound really dumb when I say the big oh, game. The big game. You know? With the Tommy one, Scoops. The Tommy Scoops. <laughs> <laughs> Sent Tommy Fish to the big game to get the Jurassic Scoops. <laughs> oh, I'm wearing off on you, aren't I? Um, yeah, so whenever bit. Tommy Scoops decides to air the thing, I, I don't know. I, I have no idea where I was going with that originally, but uh, something about Super Bowl. Um, oh, oh no, what I was going to say is, Star Wars and a lot of big movies, like the the first big game of the year, they'll they'll say like, "Here's going to be the trailer," so you guys are going to get the trailer for the movie, um, and then they'll they'll say at the end of the trailer, "Buy tickets now." It's like the first time you can buy tickets. That's happened a few a few times over the past few years. So, um, you know, that's something I guess that they does can the do. I just don't air, see them making does the money. Air on NBC. Uh. Mm. I don't, I don't know. Because <laughs> like okay, the so, Olympics, right, the Olympics do maybe. So mm, is a football mm. is a football in Olympics? No, it's not no. right. Um, well, well, I mean, could it could it be something they put on after the Super Bowl? Like, is that something to keep you? Okay, tuned? yeah. Here's like, the thing. So I think the Super Bowl, if I if I am remembering this correct, I think it jumps around because I remember like at one point they aired like um, the Office after the Super Bowl, and then like. You know, another channel would air their big show after the Super Bowl. Another channel with their big show. So it's always a thing to air your big show or your show that you want to get ratings for after the Super Bowl. So that's a thing. Um, but um, again, I just don't know how this pays them back um, for, you know, making up for that $10 million budget. So, uh, so I guess quickly looking, quickly looking Super Bowl 2020 um, Fox has it on Sunday, February 2nd. So, OK. There'd be no reason to like advertise this thing in the middle to say like stay after the Super Bowl for a Jurassic World, like a new Jurassic World short. There'd be no reason because I'm thinking like okay they make their money back through advertisers right, but Fox isn't gonna promote this thing, you know. So yeah, no, so that's out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I guess I mean this is uh. Yeah, it's a mess. I mean, NBC would certainly have games throughout the year, so that's a possibility. I just don't see them making that money sure. back from that. So um, iTunes or Amazon, you know, you can buy it on there. Maybe that would make them some money back. I don't know if you're going to make the $10 million. I have no idea what it all will equate to. But no. um, DVD sales, you know, these, like I will say, you know, the the um, Lego shorts and movies or whatever they are, um, the Indominus Escape and then uh, the Secret Exhibit. These are two things that came out on on DVD and just got lost on the shelves. Like I don't think really many people knew about them or bought them. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm completely wrong. But I just there was no hype about these things on the shelves. And again, we'll probably get to more of that kind of discussion later. But there's just no hype to them, so I feel like they just sat there and then disappeared with all the rest of the stuff, and you yeah. never saw them again. There's no hype, but like, come on, like again, my my joke from a few weeks ago, like, and Universal doesn't like Jurassic, like, the the these these Lego ones don't even get Blu-ray releases, like they're mm -hmm. just DVDs. Nothing yeah. is rendered at at 480 anymore. So high def versions exist out there. Like you can't buy a version of this that looks good on your TV. <laughs> no, most, most people don't have a standard def TV. Uh. So like. Yeah, the man. fanfare alone, like, and I'm, I, I get it, like, physical media is is kind of dying, but why DVD? I guess because you can put it on like a car, like some cars have DVD players, I guess, and that's <laughs> very specific. Like, <laughs> we want you guys to pick this up so you can watch it on your car. It's DVD well, no, player. That's, like, <laughs> that's why Disney kind of like has dropped like 3D Blu-ray. It's because like a majority of the sales go to like people who have kids for like Disney movies. I guess and so yeah. kids aren't really into putting on the glasses and, and watching a movie, you know? So Disney has kind of dropped 3d, at least in the States and in North America. But like, yeah, like it just, it's, it's just super weird. As far as I know, um, you know, NBC is, or universal or Comcast, whatever they're doing their own streaming thing. You know, and Netflix is losing The Office and other stuff that uh, NBC. Like the NBC streaming app. Well, that's the thing. I I don't think that it's going to be a traditional streaming service like a Netflix or a Hulu or Amazon or something like that. 
I think it's like if you have Comcast or you know NBC on your TV service already, you automatically are enlisted into the streaming. So you can just essentially it's just DVR. That's as far as I've heard. So technically, it's I not mean, like a separate service tangent, unless you I'm own it. All this stuff by just buying the shows that I want. Like I already own Friends on digital, like through iTunes, high def. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna replace. I have Office on DVD. Um, and Seinfeld I have on DVD. So like these services sure. that are going to hold these giant shows over our heads to get us there. I'm not buying into it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, that's but I, yeah, that's a different conversation. I just don't, I don't know. I don't think this is going to be an anchor of that or anything like that. Um, but may, may, maybe just DVD or maybe iTunes or something that just seems so lame to be honest. It just seems like, Hey, go to iTunes, download this movie, like no fanfare whatsoever. Again, no. why don't we just go ahead and just go into this uh, other topic, I guess, because we're kind of we've been edging on it this entire time. What do you say we head over there? Um, yeah, for sure. So I, I kind of wanted to discuss along with Battle at Big Rock, uh, which we've kind of done here already a little bit. I want to talk about Jurassic World of Ride, uh, Lego v- uh, Legend of Isla Nublar. Um, so with Battle at Big Rock, you know, we, we just discussed how how uneventful like the toy release was how how the the thing itself the whatever it is the big rock thing is non-existent at this point no idea no no announcement no nothing um you know it's just weird we're in this time right now where universal has had a strange string of of i don't even i can't even say releases because battle of big rock was never released it's not a thing but you know if you add the toys into that just a strange string of releases that have just, you know, fizzled out or just their, had no fanfare. Is, the extended content is not regimented. So, mm-hmm. like, let's go through this, right? We had the movie, Fallen Kingdom. Yeah. Then we got a book based on Claire. Cool. Fine. That makes sense. Tie-in. We got a video game. At the same time, we got Jurassic World Evolution. Awesome. Great. Why was fa- Why was Lego Jurassic World not released on switch day and date with falling kingdom coming out to theaters. Mm-hmm. It had never existed on the switch. We're just now a year out getting Lego Jurassic world on the switch. It makes well, no hey, sense. Hey, a year so, out, but right. you're talking about this, that game came out. out, that game came out in 2015. Right. So and a year out, <laughs> we're getting that on the switch. That should have been, that should have been the switch tie in for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Hey, before you go see Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, play the original four movies and Lego form, blah, 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 blah. And like hyped it all up. But so we're a year out and we're just getting that. We're a year out and we're just getting Jurassic World live tour. We're a year out. We're getting an announcement of a Netflix series. We're a year out and we're hearing rumblings of a live action short. We're a year out and we're hearing uh, <laughs> problem, you know, distribution problems with some of the uh, extended toy line. It's like, was nothing... Jurassic World was huge the first one. Why why was Camp Cretaceous not announced like a month after Fallen Kingdom and then that should be dude that should be out now. Like that should have been mm-hmm. in production a year ago and out now. And it's just not. Like it's nowhere. So it's just so weird the timing and it's like it's like Lego is the only one with any foresight to be like hey, you know like we di- kids like dinosaurs. Maybe we should like make projects and sell toys lego's the only one mm-hmm. and it's with their it's, it's with their animated shorts which come out to like zero fanfare so yep. it's so weird yeah and and i like where you're going with the, the whole lego stuff like the game and everything and, and and yeah it just blows my mind that we're we're getting this um you know 2015 released game now in 2019 on switch so out. sure that's it's- great but like and it's not coming out like it's not going to be a budget title. Dude, no. you can go right now on Steam. That game is on sale right now on Steam for like $7. Yeah. It's not a budget title on Switch. They're releasing it like at full price. I know. Maybe, and, four, maybe like $40. And, right? and there's but no like, like – there's no addition to Fallen Kingdom. It's not like you're getting no. like a new game. Like why was why was there no release for Fallen Kingdom Lego Jurassic? Um, you know, all these other series, I got a weird, Star weird Wars, little... Indiana yeah, Jones. I... Indiana Jones even had two versions. Are you kidding me? Well, the original Lego Indiana Jones was that the original trilogy, and then what was the second one? I never there, played it. Was it just Crystal Skull? 
there was um it was a like a completely different game if i remember correctly yeah it's um, a completely different game but like but, did they do an actual game just off one movie um i forget i'll have to look into that while we talk but um i just okay. remember there was two games and i remember i played through one but not the other and yeah. same here that's like why did we not get a follow-up even if you know there was like new stories from the original movies plus you get the full fallen kingdom movie that was just such a missed opportunity for me and i've had so many people reach out to us here at the podcast and say where is it like why did we never get one uh do you think we're going to get a fallen kingdom one do you think this or that and and the, just the answer is no like nothing we're not getting these things like lego and and universal they're all focused on shows currently which is great great but uh again no fanfare so we talked I about I wonder if as time goes on we will get a Fallen Kingdom a whatever the third movie is uh-huh. and then we'll get play through the Lego like shorts or something or like a a, sure. a new a, a third edition on that quote unquote disc that is like Lego specific like stories. Um I don't think that Lego video games are done. I'm just saying the the as we're talking the Switch games not even out yet. Where was this a year ago? This should have been the releasing is just so poor. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, so poor. And I like that idea too, as well as like, um, you know, you have um, Lego, uh, the secret exhibits, a little tie in the Indominus escape and, and legend of Isla Nublar. Like that would be a great little game too. package in fallen kingdom. Um, or, you know, maybe they tie in somehow camp Cretaceous. So they, there's so much to, to pull from with Lego. They could do so much. But, um, you know, we have uh, Lego if uh, what is it? Legend of Isla Nublar. All right. So this is the new series, which was I will say, you know, they did a great job at announcing this. This was just around the time of Toy Fair um, this year, 2019. They announced we're getting a new series later this year. Great announcement. Uh, I think there was like an image. They talked about what it's going to be, the follow up to the secret exhibit. So that was well done. Bravo. Good job. Um, they said that there's going to be tie in Lego toys, you know, uh, sets and stuff like that. And I'll say like the sets are pretty cool. I really do enjoy the sets, but a huge mistake is that there's no branding on the the sets themselves that say this is part of a TV series like the battle at big rock toys, you know, at least these could have been right. They could have been released around the same time. Like they were just released in the past, in the past month or a few weeks, so they they got the timing pretty right, you know, as far as when the TV series is going to be released. Um, Wait, get out of town. These Lego sets are not called Legends of Isla Nublar. No. No. What a missed opportunity. Right? What is happening? <laughs> why would why would this not have been why would this not have been called Lego Jurassic World Legends of Isla Nublar on the box? Like that doesn't make Wow, that's so bad. Yeah, man. I um oh that's just awful like such missed opportunity there I have no answer for that um and like I said the sets look great you got um you know you had uh for a little bit before they hit target there was like that single um Dilophosaurus on the loose set um at um Walmart for a little while then that popped up at target and all the other stuff is at target and I think they're at Walmart too I haven't checked um but um you know, they're out in stores. Everybody's seeing them, but there's no branding on them as far as I've ever seen, um, which I just I, I was looking at it. I'm like, what is going on here? Why is there no indication that this is for a TV series? You know, so what happens is people look at this set that has a a, a mech T-Rex. And, as you know, a lot of people that I've heard that seen that they're like, what is this? This is not Jurassic. Oh, my God. Lego. Lego is, you know, going off the cliff. They've jumped the shark. You know, they they don't know what they're doing. Um, This is so detached from what Jurassic is. I'm not buying it. It's stupid. So they let the narrative get away from them by not included, not including that this is part of a TV series. If they said, hey, here's the context for this model. Exactly. You will see this mech set, which I mean, I don't know if this is going to be in the show or not, but, you know, that would have been at least some great context. You will see these characters in Lego uh, Jurassic World Legend of Isla Nublar. Would have been great, but no. Botched. Completely botched again. You know? I will say <sighs> I'm really excited. One of the one of the lesser expensive sets features. I'm saying it's me. 
as a Lego character because there's a, there's a character that is uh, it's a short character. It's a short Lego character and he's got a red hoodie, which if anybody <laughs> knows me, I wear, I wear jeans and a red hoodie. Like, okay. like, like almost every day, different jeans and like, you know, different shirts and stuff like that. But <laughs> essentially I wear my red hoodie like all the time. And I've got like, I, I've got like, if I blow dry it out, I've got like straight, like dark brown, black hair. And so, and then there's this little, and he's got like a little Jurassic park logo on his chest. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I did it. I became a Lego character and they don't even know they made me. I'm so excited. <laughs> and the cool thing is the, the, the guy's name or the kid's name, cause it's like a little kid. His name's Hudson Harper, which is so like such a throwback. I love that name. Um, so Harrison's like it's got that buddy. vibe, doesn't it? Like it has a vibe like that, which I love. And that's something that Mattel has yeah. not, has not really latched onto so far, but Hudson Harper, that's such, such a cool name. I love it. Um, and yeah, yeah. I, I see that figure and it's like, it's great, you know, to have that little, um, you know, Jurassic world logo in, in, on the chest there. Um, I like, I do like this set outside of like the hovercraft thingy. Um, but, um, it's a cute little set, especially if you're trying to build out your park. Um, because you have that right. like little stand with the hats and, and other stuff, ice cream or no, is it popcorn? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just like, why is there no branding on this? Uh, I would assume, you know, since they announce these things, we'll see like, you know, this hovercraft thingy or I don't know, stuff like this, at least on the uh, on the TV show. But to me, that is just a missed opportunity to not have these things branded um, just you know, like I said, they did a great job announcing the project, but as soon as it's time to release the project, it's just a missed opportunity all around with the branding there. But also, um, I don't know if everybody out there saw, but on Jurassic World's um, social media accounts, I, I specifically I saw it on um, Instagram. So I'm thinking, I, I'm looking at their Instagram account, and I'm like, oh man, they're getting hyped. They're getting hyped for a new Lego show because they released a... a a video um, and like the comment said at Nickelodeon's hatching a new show for you. And there's like a little egg emoji. It says Lego Jurassic is coming Saturday at 1130 AM. And um, that's super misleading, super misleading for the fan base. Um, I hope not a lot of people got upset when they tuned in and they saw it. It was potentially something that they already saw on NBC. They, they just were re airing on Nickelodeon, the secret exhibit, which already aired. Um, I think this, I think this might've aired around football, like a football game or something like that. Um, but, um, yeah, it aired on NBC already back like last fall in 2018. So it, it totally misled everybody. Everybody was super I mean, Nickelodeon hyped. makes. Yeah. Nickelodeon makes so much more sense though, for this to exist on like, well, yeah, yeah. NBC is not really kid oriented. Is it? I mean, maybe Saturday morning, I think they still do like kids programming on Saturday mornings, but I don't know. Not really kid oriented. No. So yes. Great job putting it on Nickelodeon. That is fantastic. I have no qualms with that. Like put it on Nickelodeon. Perfect place for it. Um, you know, Nickelodeon, uh, I think, you know, has ties to NBC, Comcast, all that, Universal, um, which, by the way, I wish that was still in the theme parks, that Nickelodeon spot. Oh, wouldn't, that was, it, wasn't, it wouldn't have been great. That, that was amazing. Like, that was such a great place when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, but great that it's on Nickelodeon. Really misleading that they're saying the new show is coming for you this Saturday, and it turned it turned out to be uh, an old show, not, you know, it was new, I guess, to, to Nickelodeon, but that's not what people saw. You know, they saw this and they said, oh, I've seen the one that was already airing. You know, they're, they're, they're going to have a sequel to it. And I'm going to see that one this Saturday. But lo and behold, it was a, a re-airing of what was on NBC. So that was a bit disappointing, super weird. super weird. And it was just such a lame attempt at like promoting something. Um, sorry, sorry, Universal, if you're listening to this. Oh, well, um, just a lame attempt, to be honest. It was like a sentence, you know? So if you are if you have something that's, you know, transitioning over to a new network, you got it on Nickelodeon, want people to pay attention, boost it. You know, get this signal out there. Tell everybody that, you know, this, this, new, this old series is going to be re-airing and then tell them we've got a new series coming down the road in a few weeks. So... Um, around that same time that they released that, uh, maybe a few days before, actually, this 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 series just randomly dropped, just randomly dropped 
in Australia and me, I don't know, maybe some other um, places as well. I didn't look into it too far, but it, it released in Australia and people were watching this thing with no fanfare. Again, nothing, no announcement whatsoever. Nothing, which was just, it was crazy. And, and I mean, some different people, markets get different, get things at different times, like kind of all the time. But yeah, fine. you're right. Like, but not even why? Australia knew this was happening. You well, know, and Australia is also a small market. Like, why would you first release it there? Why wouldn't you do the North American market first? Or yeah. like even like the European market? I don't know. Super I mean, when especially they... because I feel like Jurassic is bigger in Europe than it is really anywhere. Sure. I feel like that. When they released um, the uh, Jurassic World, the exhibition, they, they released it first in Australia, too. So maybe they got some sort of, you know, push maybe. over there. I don't know. But um I just thought it was crazy. I remember Chris, uh, Chris Pugh, Chris like Zinos, he, he tweeted out like a link and said like, is this really happening? And it was like a schedule for some Australian TV network. And, you know, a day later, it was literally like a day that, that this was put up there and people started knowing about it. And then people, you know, set their DVRs, checked it out. Um, and it was legit. It aired. And I think they aired maybe two parts already. So you've already seen like two episodes or whatever. Um, which it just blew my mind that they just threw this, you know, in Australia. I feel bad for people in Australia who didn't know it was happening. Um, and it's just such a weird release, you know, I mean, I'm not saying we need to get things here first in the U S but no, 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 some sort of announcement that this is happening. You know, is it, I'm, cl- I'm trying to open iTunes. Can I buy this right now? Like, because of TV, <laughs> is it on iTunes for me to buy? Um, I actually don't know, but um, it's worth looking into. But I, I would say probably no. Um, I've heard some cool things. I have not personally looked into the um, the synopsis and stuff like that for the new episodes. I've heard that there's some really cool stuff in there, some stuff to get excited about. Um, as we know, this is nothing that's canon or anything like that. If you if you watched uh, the secret exhibit, it was fun. It was a great little show, um, and it had a nice like cool. Uh, world building reveal at the end, which I loved, and I can't wait to see how that gets expanded upon in the the. Uh, uh, see, I'm always forgetting these stupid titles. Legend of Isla Nublar, um, which is going to be a 13 part show. So that's that's cool. I'm very excited for that to officially start airing. And I know you you're all thinking to yourself, "Hey, they did announce it. They announced the date when it's happening." I know, um, but that came very late in the game. So as of this recording. They finally announced via some websites, and I have here entertainment uh, uh, ew dot com. Uh, they actually released a trailer, so or at least um, a clip. So there is a clip. Um, you know what, Aaron? I don't, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear this, but um, That's fine. yeah, play it. Play I'm going to go ahead and play it uh, while we're doing this. So, oops, there we go. Can you hear that? You'll yeah, I can hear. Like our gyrosphere ride is especially popular today. That's supposed to be Claire. The gondola sky ride gives guests a bird's eye view of the park. And you'll notice the increasingly Owen. cranky animal behaviorist in the next Jeep over. <laughs> Just going to take a little shortcut now. Can't you at least pretend we're on the same team? I thought I was pretending. <laughs> all right, all right. Hmm. The park seems to have everything. Ah, the music. Everything but dinosaurs. Note for review. You might want to wait before making that note, Mr. Mitchell. Want to see more videos? So, like- um, no, I don't want to see more. Um, <laughs> um, so basically, you know, if you couldn't get the gist of what was happening there, um, Claire is driving around in a Jeep with a passenger um, who looks strangely like Ian Malcolm, which I'm sure was done on purpose. Um, they pass a gyrosphere station, which looks fantastic. 
Owen is riding beside them on an ATV with his dog Red, which I love. I love that Red is a character. Um, and they they oh, go underneath. Why? So it can be the opposite of blue. I guess to kind of like give some history, you know. And actually, I think they did. They you know touched upon that in the uh, secret exhibit, which I think was cute. It was it was great. And I, I personally I, I like the fact of him like having a dog. But it also makes me very sad for Jurassic World because he has no dog. <laughs> Oh no, dude! What do you think happened to his dog? What's I don't know. <laughs> I am horrified, and I I don't think they'll ever touch upon it in this show. <laughs> but all I all I all I can all I envision now is that sound effect of the Rex strangling that gallop. Oh. oh no! Or, or I'm thinking about the Lost World where the the T Rex has the dog chain hanging out of its mouth. Oh. Uh. oh. <laughs> Oh no! Even worse, Poor but Red. Uh, but Poor Red is a very cute dog. Plays a big part into the uh, the first two parts of this uh, you know prequel series, and I love I love it. So it's a great addition. But they're driving along, driving along, um, and they come. Uh, I guess like this guy that's uh, in the car with them. He's playing like he looks like Malcolm, but he's playing the role of um, uh, kind of like. Um, a, a Donald Gennaro type where he's trying to sign off on it. And he's like, oh, I don't see any dinosaurs, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to, I'm going to write you a, a, a bad review here. And um, then, you know, Claire's like, wait for it, wait for it. And then it's literally the same thing from, from Jurassic park. The first movie that they ride up the Jeeps up to the Hill. And he notices the, the Brachiosaurus there standing there pulling uh, leaves from the tree. And it's the exact same moment. And they, they use like the music. That. They use the music, which is great. These exact moments are like some kids' like first experience with that moment. Uh, yeah, it's kind of sad. Um, like it, stresses, it stresses me out. <laughs> you know, I, I've had that same conversation with my wife about um, revealing certain things to our son Lincoln. And like, when do we show him things um, as far as like big moments in cinema? And it turns out well, that... The, Big moments in cinema are spoiled all the time. Like this, for instance. Like, if kids see this first, they'll be like, oh, that's great. I love it. It looks awesome. And then when they see the movie, they'll be like, oh, that's old news. I've already seen that in the in the TV show. And it'll have no well, impact. I mean, I, I've had that exact experience. Right? Like, I didn't see I didn't see Die Hard until this last Christmas, dude. Like, for real. Same, but as I'm watching same. Die Hard, I'm just like, <laughs> dude, I've seen this a million times because it's been ripped off so many times. Uh-huh. Like, Smallville did a Die Hard episode. Like, did they? I forget. Smallville, small, or I'm sorry, Smallville. Yes, they did. But like Die Hard being such a classic, it's been ripped off over and over and over again. That like when I was watching Die Hard for the first time, I was like, I've oh, seen yeah. this. Yeah. You know, and like that's not cool. No, I mean, and that's the thing. Like even Stranger Things is, I won't say ripping off, but they're, they're, you know, carrying things over from Jurassic and other things. Like, like i don't know if you watched like the recent season but there's just so much jurassic vibes in there and it's just like yeah i've already seen it in in stranger things so it has maybe no emotional weight or or, you know weight at all um in the in the actual movies and um one of the things which has bugged me is you know my son has been watching toy story and toy story 2 has a tie-in which i do you know the toy story movies right yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so in Toy Story 2, Zerg is chasing after uh, Buzz and the gang, and they're on the elevator. And hey, guys, if you haven't seen Star Wars, uh, The uh, Empire Strikes Back, turn turn this off or skip ahead, but like you know what's coming. Unless you're a kid. If you're a kid and you're listening, please skip ahead. I don't want to spoil this. But Zerg is like, I'm your father. And, yeah. and Buzz yeah. is like, no! It's like literally this, <laughs> the same oh. moment. So... If my son sees this over and over and over again, it's it's certainly one thing that he sees it in there. And he's like, oh, my God, could you believe Zerg was Buzz's dad the whole time? And then they have a catch afterwards. But then when I I've been waiting years and years and years to show him this 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 movie, you know, Star Wars. So you show him them in, in the order they came out. And then is there an impact when he sees the Empire Strikes Back? You also want him to be old enough to, like, comprehend and remember what's going yeah. on. Like, because I'm kind of there with my nephews, like. I really want to, sh- I really want to be, there. I mean, it's my nephew, so I don't really have like first right or whatever, right? but like, <laughs> I would love to be there to do like a Jurassic park, like weekend or something. Mm-hmm. But like, from what I understand is like, oh, he's already seen like clips of them. And like you were saying like uh toy story two, 
they do a Jurassic Park gag in Toy Story 2 in the toy aisle with the T-Rex chasing oh, yeah. the car. So like yeah. these classic movies ripped off so many times and not badly. <laughs> the the Jurassic gag in Toy Story 2 is phenomenal. Oh yeah. And they even use the roar in Toy Story 3. Like they actually use it in that like uh they montage the in the in beginning. Toy Story 1. Yeah, they? no, they use the toy, they use the roar even in Toy Story 1. Okay. Yeah, I I, um, I haven't seen that one when, in a little bit, but I remember the third one was using it during that uh opening sequence yeah. too. During the opening sequence, yes, for sure. It's um, so funny though. Like that you just never know how things are gonna be perceived. And yes, they're kind of ripping off that moment, but I like it. It looks cute, it looks fun. Um, so I'm happy. I'm happy for it. And uh the fact that they which I was I was trying to get to before when I got sidetracked by this uh video, but um, you know, they unveiled the uh the release date, which is gonna be September 14th. This I think is coming out, you know, the week just before September. So you got some time to catch up and, and uh, set your DVRs. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to get it on iTunes where I'll, I'll just binge watch the whole thing at one time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 13 parts, not too bad to, to buy that up. Um, I know I was recently looking into a star Wars TV show and it's like, they, they released like 22 episodes and I'm like, Oh gosh, that's a lot to catch up on. So 13 is a good number. And this is going to be set in 2012, so three years before the events of 2015, uh, 15's Jurassic World. So, yeah, I, I think it's cute. It's a, it's something that you should definitely watch the Secret Exhibit first, which they are airing currently on um, uh, Nickelodeon, so keep your eyes out for that. But, yeah, it's just another one of those things that, like, you know, up until now, they haven't said anything. So, great, we finally got an announcement here. But I feel like it's just, like, too little too late at this point, you know? Um, and then what else do we have? So Battle at Big Rock kind of botched. Lego of uh, Vizsla Nublar kind of botched, but, um, you know, they're making up for it a little bit here and there. Jurassic World The Ride is, I feel like, another one of those things that... Um, Tell me, Brad, how many more botched things are on our list today? Um, I think just one. I think just one. Uh, Jurassic World The Ride. Okay. This is another mixed bag. All right. So... They release the ride. They they open it up for um, you know, uh soft openings, which they're you know, they're going through technical rehearsals, trying to get the kinks out, opening up for people to give it a shot, see what it's like. But also, you know, it could go down at any moment and it could be, you know, taken offline or whatever, and they need to work out things. All the effects might be not might not be operating. Um, and then a few days later, they actually open up the ride with like a tweet and a few emails saying, Hey, the ride's open. Come check it out. It's official. So for me, that was pretty botched. But those theme parks, they thrive on the last month of summer. And Mm -hmm. so honestly, like they had to open that or else it was going to come out. (laughs) Well, it came out to no fanfare really, but like it had commercials and I thought the commercial was quite good. That's what Um, I mean. Like this is a mixed bag because the commercials were fantastic. Like, uh, that 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 one big one where you know where the T Rex burst through You're the all running from yeah. something um, yeah. like the whole back lot set like with the cowboys yeah. and this, the uh, uh, astronauts and all that stuff amazing great job um, but then like the Things fact that this real. was just like, it's great yeah but then the ride just like hey it just opened we're we're done testing it out um, and I was just disappointed in that because I know this ride is not finished this ride is. 100% not finished. You know, there's effects in the beginning that have never seen the light of day. And that's no pun intended. It's like the, the portion where, um, you know, the Mosasaurus tank is supposed to change, uh, you know, light to dark and stuff and with rain and all the other aspects that, you know, it changes with the atmosphere. I have never seen anybody talking about that. It's never happened. Um, I have never uh, seen the actual vehicles move. Um, the, the, well, that's, that's a misstatement, I guess they move straight and down, but they're supposed to bump and jostle that never happened. Oh, okay. okay. That never came online. We know that the Indominus Rex was built as a full, you know, they built everything. They built the arms, they built the legs, they built the body, but, um, we haven't gotten that. We, we got the, the head popping out, which was fine. That was never going to be more than just a head popping out up top. Um, but then the one at the end, this was supposed to be an epic battle and then it never happened. It, they, they, they pushed the line, uh, the ride online too soon. And this is all due to the whole theme park battling, you know, um, Hagrid opens up, 
uh, or actually even going farther, you know, you have um, Galaxy's Edge opening up in Disneyland. Um, Again, had, unfinished, not fully open. A hundred percent accurate. Unfinished. What I'm so, I'm so mad on? about all this, dude. Unfinished ride, like they 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 didn't really finish the land per se, but the ride there was no second ride experience, which was supposed to open up at the same time. They force it out there early just to to make their buck, like you were saying in the summer, um, and say dude. we'll open the other one later on. It'll be open up later, like the other ride. What are you gonna say? I lived in Orlando during the entire construction of the original Harry Potter land. Mm -hmm. And that land opened with the most. Now it could have just been because I was living in Orlando. So I was just like bombarded with advertisements and stuff, but that land opened with the fanfare of fanfare. Like they flew in actors, dude, it was. So I was going to school there. So we just kind of like walked in and into the back lot and then, and then onto the property. But like, it was like, you could go ride the ride. You could experience all the paintings inside the Lion queue. You could go have a butter beer. You could have a beer at the tavern. You could go um, get a wand. You could do. You could go to the candy shop. Like that thing was open and it was awesome. And like, wh- why is Galaxy's Edge opening to like? It's like the opening for Galaxy's Edge is going to be a two year process. Like. Uh, so they open it up like halfway. There's still not a ride that's on online yet. So they, they're going to open up that one later Then the hotel experience. It's coming. <laughs> and, uh, Oh, the article just came out today and it's going to be like three grand oh, for God. like three nights or something. Yeah. And it's like, why, why this long? I mean, I guess it's probably, it's gotta be because it's so expensive, right. To create these things that they sure. gotta like start getting income right away like the earliest possible moment yep. so they can finish off the other stuff, I guess. Is that kind of the idea? Well, there there has been some issues with um, uh, Rise of the Resistance, which is the second attraction. Um, That's like a great movie ride one, right? Um, sort of, yeah. Uh, kind of, you know, along those uh, lines where... That you, model you, of ride. Well, yeah, you get on a spaceship, you you make your way up to a, a Star Destroyer, you exit the vehicle, you walk, you, you, this is still part of the attraction. You're walking and then you get captured. You go into a jail cell, then you board the vehicle and then the vehicle takes you around the Star Destroyer and then you eventually fly off the Star Destroyer. It's pretty crazy, but, um, it, it, there's mm-hmm. issues with it. So they, they've, they decided to put all of their, their workforce into the rest of the land and the, um, uh, smugglers run a Falcon attraction. And then sure. once that finished, then they decided, hey, let's throw everybody we have on Rise of the Resistance. So that's not opening it up until um, January, I think, in in um, uh, in Disneyland. And it's opening up earlier in December uh, in um, Hollywood Studios in Florida. It's actually opening up, I think, this week as far as the land is concerned in Hollywood Studios. So they're still opening up without the second attraction as well. Um, Wait, the land, there's a, there's the land in Orlando is opening. Yep. Yep. The, I believe it's like the 29th of August. So oh, to, no, to no fanfare. What do you, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I, no, I think no. there will be some fanfare. Keep your eyes peeled. I think there's going to be some fun stuff. Um, but, um, and they'll, they'll certainly make a bigger fanfare once the second attraction opens up. But, um, where are we going with this? Okay. So that, that opens up in, in, uh, Disneyland Hagrid's opened up. Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure opened up in Orlando. That had a ton of fanfare. They flew out the actors. It was a big deal. But that ride opened up unfinished. And it's and it went down a ton of times. There was a ton of issues. They opened it up halfway through the day and said, we're going to open this ride up at noon, guys. So don't come here in the morning. And then they Do said, hey, guys, we're going to work at it, on it at night. So don't come here late. So they, you they botched Universal that. Universal going like, do you think it's Universal saying, well, no, because this is in L.A.? Oh, yeah, which is where which is where Star Wars is. Do you think it's Universal saying there's an influx of tourists coming this year for Star Wars? We have to pull them in for one day of their trip. Yes. Yes. That's got to be it, right? Exactly. So that's why these things are all tied up the way they are. They want to get Hagrid out there in Orlando to, to, hit, to hit the market before Star Wars comes. And then after Hagrid, they open up Jurassic World in, or, in uh, Hollywood. And they want to hit it before... Um, well, no, I guess they just want to they want to, like you said, pull the people in um, that are already going to Disneyland. So they didn't right. have any any other big thing really to open up just yet. 
Um, so they open up that. And like I said, you know, very little fanfare as far as the ride opening. Um, just a few press releases and stuff, but it was just so minimal. Um, and then a few weeks later, they decide to do the grand opening. So, yes, the grand opening was pretty great. Uh, they got, um, you know, uh, Colin Trevorrow, I think Frank Marshall, Bryce and Chris were out there. Um, and it was a big deal, like a, a good job. But I'm just so bummed that they decide to release an unfinished ride. That really, really irks me. And across the board, like we had just said, everybody's been releasing unfinished stuff to either beat each other, to hit the summer market, and it's really obnoxious. And Jurassic World, you know, fell into that trap as well. And it's 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 a shame. We should be seeing the finished model at some point. Um, hope, I don't know, hopefully this year. But uh, word was out there at some point that we should be getting the full animatronic and this full experience. So I don't know, just keep your eyes peeled, but I just don't like this trend of like, let's release what we have. They'll like it. <laughs> you know? So the, the problem with me is so many people that go to these parks, you know, they, they make their trip out to Hollywood. They make their trip out to Orlando. We pay good money guys. Like we pay a lot of money to visit these parks. You're talking about hundreds of dollars a day. And if you're, if you're staying on property even more and, you guys are releasing stuff that is not finished. Take your time. Stop it. Literally stop I mean, doing that. When I saw the when I saw the estimated prices for what the Star Wars like hotel experience was going to be, I was thinking to myself, this thing better be done and it better be <laughs> epic hopefully from day 1. You're talking about $3,000 um, you know, a we'll person? See. That's uh, nuts. That's so nuts. And and I, I was yeah, so sad yeah, reading that because I mean, these are just like estimates, but yeah, of course, um, no, you know, three thousand dollars a site. person. It was like three thousand dollars for like a four, for like a four person room. There was some like, like miswriting in that article. It was a little sloppy, so I was it was, was kind of hard to. Un there was some like bad writing in that article, so it was hard to understand the pricing. But yeah. um, but yeah, it's just it's just too much money. And John uh, John Hammond said, you know we shouldn't only cater to the super rich and that's just what these parks are doing now. And it's a real shame. It's really hard to visit them when they do this. Yeah. Unfortunately that's the, that's the case. But, so uh, that was well, like, that was a, that was a good rant. <laughs> yeah. You I know, think, a think, lot of, a lot of unfinished, a lot of unfinished stuff, but um, you know, why don't we um, take a break here and relax and uh, talk about our spotlight. So we, we try to do this every month spotlight somebody from the community or something from the community or, or whatever. Um, today, we're going to be talking about Mr. Classic Jurassic. So we have not had him um, on the podcast here, but um, Mr. Classic Jurassic popped up. Um, I don't know what the exact date was, but it was fairly recently, I feel like, overall in the grand scheme of things. Um, somewhat of a newcomer, if I remember correctly. But this is a great Instagram page. So Mr. Classic Jurassic, go follow that over on Instagram if you're not already, um, you know, liking his page. But um, it's instantly pretty awesome. So when you scroll down, you see that there's some actual work going into this, like this page, you know, with the um, with the way the pictures are all laid out and the pattern that's going on here. I love how everything is symmetrical when you're scrolling through. That's something that like good YouTubers do. They don't just like put random pictures. They actually create like a cool looking timeline. And Mr. Classic Jurassic has done that. Um, actually, yeah, here's the first one. Looks like May 2nd. So that was the first uh, Instagram post. And since then, uh, this page has been posting all kinds of great content, whether it's, um, you know, toy photography, a lot of toy photography. But the the key thing here is the uh, dinosaur profiles and stuff like that, species profiles. Oh, they're fantastic. Yeah, they're so, so good. Um, created as if it's part of like an in-gen database where, you know, he's got a great um, intro video, um, logo, you know, kind of thing. Um, you know, an in-gen database kind of thingy there where you can uh, actually feel like it's part of the universe. And then there's a great like a slide that basically shows off all the Mattel toys in their glory, like great, phenomenal, like studio pictures of these against the white background. Um, so you can see them in all their detail. You know, it's it looks fantastic. And they actually have a ton of like information there. So if you like, for instance, I'm looking at the um, the Allosaurus or no, let's let's take the Nasutoceratops because it's an interesting one. Um, <clears throat> actually has the, the name there, Nasutoceratops. It actually has the scan 
like the scan code on the bottom of the foot to add it to your collection for the Jurassic World Facts app. It has the diet, herbivore, uh, family, ceratopsia day, I don't know how to say that, uh, height, 7.5 feet, length, 16 to 20 feet, weight, 4,000 to 6,000 pounds, and it even has a description here. And a pseudoceratops is an extinct genus of, here we go again, ceratopsian. Oh, that was easy. Dinosaurs. It is basically, oh man, this is, I'm, I'm going to stop reading. There's too many big words, but it has a description, folks. Um, so there's a lot of work that goes into this. Um, there's great videos um, with each post, uh, the picture there, and also like another picture showcasing like a nice little tray with the, uh, uh, the Dino Rivals like collector's card. So you can see what that looks like. So this is really high quality content for you guys over on Instagram. So if you're not already following uh, Mr. Classic Jurassic, you definitely should be. Have you uh, gotten a chance to check this page out? Yeah, I love it. I love, well, one, I love the Hasbro toys um, to begin with. And then what you're saying about like wait, the wait, data wait, 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 sheet. Wait, you want to, re- you want to repeat that? You sure you love the Hasbro toys or? Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so late. It's so late. Oh, for anybody that I interact with online, you know I freaking hate the Hasbro toys. Um, love the Mattel toys. Um, I love the Mattel toys. <laughs> what I faced the other day was like, oh, I saw this Indomit- this Hasbro Indominus Rex, and it was like, $2, like $25. And I was like, you've done the world a disservice by leaving that that dinosaur in circulation you should oh that was great who who was that do you remember who that was exactly i was like i was like you you (laughs) you owe the community to go back and buy it and burn it that was i could not believe that you know that just got lost somewhere in the store the hasbro and dominus rex and it It was was still there like like walmart just happened on the shelf because they just happened to find it and someone was like well i passed on it i'm like you've you've done the world a giant (laughs) um anyway no i love the metal toys I love that these images on here remind me of like the in-gen database stuff that uh, Tembo has uh, that Mm -hmm. Roland has in the Jeep during the chase sequence in the Lost World. Um, It's all really cool. This is kind of what I was hoping that Mattel would do with like their trading cards or with their data cards um, instead Mm -hmm. of like kind of the the fake for sure like stats or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, What that stuff is fun for kids, I think, but. I really would have liked something a little more educational because I remember loving that myself as a kid. And this kind of fills that, that niche. Yeah, I agree. I think this would have been great. It's definitely that baseball card stat sheet, you know, it's, it's awesome. Um, and, uh, I believe he actually just got, um, as of this recording, I think as we were doing it tonight, uh, he got the Brachiosaurus. So I think he did a live stream of that over on the channel. So, there's a lot of great content over there, and uh, like I said, fairly new, uh, May of this year, some great stuff. Um, g- cool little logo. I like that, too. The Mr. Classic Jurassic with the roaring T-Rex and the forest in the background. It's awesome. So great content. We'll have the link in our show notes so you can check out Mr. Classic Jurassic's Instagram page. Thanks for the content, dude. Yeah, it's awesome. But speaking of the Brachiosaurus... Uh... Ooh. Let's yeah. harp on this one more time. <laughs> we're not done. We're not done. Uh, <laughs> we criticizing. We're still criticizing here. So, yeah, I, we, we don't need to spend time on this. I just <laughs> I bring it up because I think it's important to keep an eye on the release of this figure. Sure. Um, today on Twitter, uh, where I've put it. Let me pull it up here. Uh, Debosaurus Rex at Debosaurus Rex eighty one on Twitter asked. Uh, why did you remove the at Mattel Brachiosaurus off your website at Target? Um, I would like to buy a few of those for myself and the kids. At Ask Target replies, we appreciate your interest in this product. We understand your request and we'll share this again with our buying team. This item is no longer sold online, no in store. Thank you for your interest. What is going on? <laughs> I called this and oh my God, I get to use it. Boy, do I hate being right all the time. <laughs> I uh, really do. It's I'm let's... so upset with this tweet. Now, I don't know how extensive this is. I don't know like if this is really target answering, but no. man, this tweet does not look good. No, of course. And it, it's one of those things that creates chaos. And, um, you know, the people who, 
who who just freak out right away, understandably, because this is a coveted item. Um, they see this tweet from Ask Target, and it says it's no longer sold online. And and weird wording here, no in store. I don't know why it said it like that, but um, <clears throat> this makes people worry. But I I, I don't want to be the person to be like, well, I'm here to say, don't worry, folks. But you know, I no, want to I mean, say temper your temper your like reaction to this, just because. This this is most likely near a hundred percent just some random representative at Target that all they can see in their computer system it, from their data is it's not it's there. no longer there. Yeah, it's not there. Right. It's not sold in stores. It's not sold online, which that's accurate. And I mean, I'm fully willing to admit I was the king of hyperbole with the John Hammond figure, uh-huh. and it honestly seems like that, like even people that were able to get them. Uh, pre-ordered for comic-con or whatever it honestly feels like they're gonna be be, their comic-con pre-order is going to be fulfilled by entertainment earth just like anybody who bought it like what a week after comic-con or whatever yeah so you know who knows maybe this brachiosaurus isn't coming to target maybe it's going to be another (laughs) entertainment earth thing because they have the infrastructure to actually store it and distribute it you know who knows sure Um, i mean I, it's I don't frustrating wanna, though. It is frustrating. I, I want to say that as far as we know, they will be hitting the shelves in October. That is as much as we have seen. And we know that they they just recently reset the shelves. Uh, not at my store. They have not done that just yet. But um they actually they reset the uh like the tags, the price tags and stuff like that. So it does say like Primal Pal Blue. There is no Primal Pal Blue there, but it does say it and it does say Indominus Rex. But I have not seen them. By the time I see them, it's going to be time to change this over again. Um, early October is, um, I think it was like October 4th or 6th, is Triple Force Friday. You know, the annual Star Wars uh, toy release where, you know, we got a big movie coming out this this December. So it's time to release Triple Force Friday this time. So uh, The Rise of Skywalker, you got The Mandalorian, and um, I always forget the name of the game, but there's a video game coming out as well. Um, oh, yeah, so the they're game. releasing, yeah, they're releasing stuff for all three of those early October. So I would assume that, you know, when that's happening, Jurassic might want to go ahead and push out some good stuff at that time for Target yeah, and other course. stores. Of so course. keep your eyes out. It, it, as far as I know, it's actually happening. So don't get too worried yet. I'm sure, I'm sure this is just a, a random representative, but you know, it, it's, it is accurate that this is creating worry, confusion, and hysteria. And it, it does make you wonder, you know, hey, maybe there is an issue. You know, maybe there is something that happened behind the scenes that we don't know about. And it's going to Entertainment Earth or it's going to this or that. I don't think that's the case. Like I said, as far as we know, it's hitting the shelves. But, um, yeah, you never know, I guess. I mean, I will find one of these things at some point, like (laughs) no matter what I've wanted it for 27 (laughs) years. I I will find one. Um, You know, I just, I kind of made a joke earlier to you. I was like, yeah, you know, can't wait to get my fluorescent orange one at Walmart. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's (laughs) re-release. But yeah, I, I'm not too worried yet, but it is unfortunate that this representative target either it's either true or they just didn't bother to research anything to like kind of calm these these nerves that are out there. Sure. Um, Because we are seeing influencers get them and yep. They've gotten them here in the States and, and it has been officially released overseas. So, um, which I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen that, that, that awesome picture from Nathy Vader, um, our buddy over there. Um, Dude, he's got water. (laughs) He's got four of them in the water. (laughs) It's so cool. He's like, He's like living my dream. I said, I wrote him, I was like, dude, you're living my dream. I was like, and I, you know, I was the guy who wanted like 20 gallimimus and I, I, I managed to do it, but like, oh, I want like four or five brachiosaurus because yeah. they move in herds, Brad. They do. They do, move in herds. they do move in herds. Yeah. We've, we've quoted the movie a lot tonight, haven't we? All right. Good episode. Um, what? All right. So that's, that's it. We don't have much else to say. Just don't worry just yet. I think that's, that's normal. Um, lastly here. Start to worry start to worry okay (laughs) lastly here we wanted to touch on something actually we um 
uh, which I should probably bring that information up. We uh, reached out on our Facebook group. So if you're part of our Facebook group, um, every now and then I'll do stuff like this where I'll ask specific people, um, well, not specific, but our Facebook group to say, you know, what do you want to hear? What do you want to hear on The Wire or on this segment or that segment? So um, we actually reached out and asked, what do you guys want to hear this week? And uh, before, I'm trying to track it down, the post that I did in there. But um, all right, here we go. Uh, this is from, Ooh, where is it? Okay. Uh, Cullen actually said the Jurassic world mini game, miniature game. So I figured, why don't we talk about this? Because it's actually something I don't think we've really mentioned at all here. I know our buddy Clayton Fioriti has, has done a a few videos and stuff on it. Um, there was a, this game was, it's apparently an officially licensed product. But it's over on Kickstarter, which it's already gone through its whole, you know, um, timeline and everything. And it's been uh, approved and uh, if it's funded. But um, it's interesting, right, that this uh, officially licensed thing ended up on um, Kickstarter. Have you ever seen any kind of officially licensed product do go through this kind of, you know, production before? Video games do it all the time. And I want to say that, yeah, like you'll see sometimes you'll see officially licensed things like a Goonies game or something like that, but you never see anything that's like super relevant. Like I feel like Jurassic world is right now. Mm -hmm. Like I I was talking to you and I kind of feel bad because I feel like um, someone asked us to cover this. And I think when people ask us to cover things, it's because they're excited about stuff. And I'm just not like a really big board game or miniature game person. I will say like, I'm not unwilling to try it. Um, But I, I find it weird that this, very relevant property reached out via Kickstarter to get going. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. I don't know if it was like a thing where universal just maybe didn't have faith in the board game business. Why Um, would they, when the one that's like a target exclusive, like doesn't sell it's, it's always mm -hmm. like on sale and the Mondo one, obviously they didn't have faith in it. They canceled theirs. So like, They canceled theirs, but also opened up another one, a smaller rendition of it. But yeah, I don't know, man. And this is, this is more, I feel like more like the Mondo version, at least in far as, as far as like a scope is concerned, because you're talking about big miniatures, (laughs) big miniatures. No, but I get what you're saying. Like, um, this is something for me, like I'll totally get this. I never have enough people in a room to play a game like this Uh at a time. I'm a little concerned that it, it it does say ships worldwide, I guess, but the backing is in, is that euros? I think this is a, a French manufacturer, if I remember correctly. Okay. Um, but yeah. So, I, Cause there is a Jurassic world game that came out in Europe, right? That we never got over yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. There was some sort of game that, that uh, came out. I don't remember, but um, I remember not getting it. <laughs> a square box just like this, but it yep. was black and it had the Jurassic world logo on it. And so I'm, I'm always kind of nervous with these games because I'm like, I don't know who's the audience. Obviously, whoever bought into this on the Kickstarter is going to get their copy. That's great. That's guaranteed mm. win. I didn't know about this until this was over. So yeah. I'm wondering if it's something I'll ever be able to get. Um, I don't know. I would assume. No, I would assume after the fact there should be availability. Um, but as far as it looks like I'm looking through pictures of the uh, sculpts that they have, it looks like they're using like the, ILM models uh, of all this stuff. So I'm I'm looking at um, you got a Carnotaurus there. It looks beautiful. Uh, these are like miniature figures. You have the mercenaries. So there's like three mercenaries there. A Triceratops, uh, Indominus Rex, uh, Indoraptor, Raptors, T Rex. Uh, I think that's spelled wrong. Um, another Carnotaurus. But um, and then there is an image here. I think yeah. No, this is actually like a video. But there's a full, like, pretty big game board um, with, like, plants on it, uh, these figures, and some, like, bigger card pieces and stuff like that. So this looks pretty cool um, yeah. as far as I can tell. Like, it looks like it'll be a lot of fun. I've just never been, like, a miniature game person. So that's why I, I haven't really covered it or known about it too much because it's just not on my radar, I guess. Yeah, but... Now that I'm seeing this, this is definitely on my radar as something to look sure. for. But again, oh man, the Stiggy Moloch is so cool. It's really cool. Um, 
but yeah, again, I, I just don't know. Oh, so is the Ankylosaur. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. There's actually uh, eight, it looks like eight mercenaries and they have four raptors. Yeah, there's oh, yeah. Man. Where are you uh, seeing all those ones? Are they on that same uh, oh, I just Kickstarter? Yeah, there's a <laughs> triceratops, there's a gyrosphere, Dr. E. Malcolm. I don't know if these are like Oh yeah, some are posing exclusive. I don't they know are, that. yeah, Kickstarter exclusives, I guess. So if you like, probably hit one of the um, stretch goals. The, or yeah, something. They, so they have Roland Tembo. Oh man, yeah, you're right. Wow, Stiggy, the Jeep, Comp- ammo pack. The pack. Like this stuff is awesome, and so I'm kind of excited for this. Um, again, I hope we get it like readily available for everyone. That's pretty awesome. And there's different scenarios. A Mosasaurus. <laughs> Explore well, vehicle. With, yeah, there's a Jurassic Park, a Lost World, and a Jurassic Park 3 scenarios. Um, and then there's uh, Jurassic World scenarios and Fallen Kingdom scenarios. Like, dude, this is awesome. Okay, I was not excited, but now I'm scrolling through this and I'm totally down. Like, I, I yeah, you're right. I keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and they have literally everything. Like, everything you could possibly want. Like, park gates. They have a goat um just jurassic park decor which is like the this is what i need this is the bathroom set fallen and broken apart and there's a toilet <laughs> still standing um amazing a tree a broken fence like there's just so much stuff here which i like i don't understand because other pictures make the board game look a little small um so i don't really know what you would do with all that stuff but like well, i said i'm not scenario. Right? Like it's, I guess I'm not a, a miniature board game person, like I said, but I am a board game person as far as like, um, like th- themed board games. Uh, I have one that's like a, a theme park board game. Um, what's that one that's like contagious or contagion or? Oh, I don't know, man. Uh, there's there's one out there that's really fun. Um, and it's like all about a virus and stuff, outbreak or something. I forget. Um, that game's great. Um, but there's all kinds of cool games like that that I'm into. But uh, I might have to dive into this miniature thing because I just have no clue what it's about, though. No, and I, I think when this comes out, if I can get my hands on it, I definitely will. But this is something that I hope they release the game and then they release, like, expansions later on so that I can invest in this. This is something that I wouldn't mind investing in. Sure. Um, and unfortunately, the Kickstarter is over, so it's yeah. kind of late for that. But as an after Kickstarter person, I hope this is something that I could get into. Um yeah, I'm super excited for this. Yeah, it looks awesome. I um, I like this. This is awesome. Yeah, it's, as far as you can scroll, like literally the longest scrolling page ever. Um, there's some really great stuff in there, and their imagery is pretty cool too. Like the logo that they have, the stuff that they're using over on their Facebook page, uh, for the graphics for the dinosaurs, very cool stuff. Um, I'm trying to find like information, but I'm actually having a hard time finding like. There's a little, a few little paragraphs and stuff, but um, I don't know if I want to read all those. Well, uh, let's see. It looks like if you can't get, if you can't pick this up in store, it looks like you'll be able to get it shipped if you're in the USA uh, between ten and sixteen dollars. Uh, Canada, fifteen to twenty five dollars. Australia, twenty to thirty dollars. Um, ex- extended USA, uh, twenty to thirty dollars. China, twenty to thirty five dollars. And these are just the shipping prices. Um, I want to actually see what the cost of the game would be. Um, just as doing a quick scroll but uh this looks really exciting i'm totally down for this yeah yeah definitely um but yeah we gotta wait and see i guess um and definitely go ahead and join like the um facebook page it looks like an at jurassic world miniature game um you can follow along over there i went to click on their website uh which is the same thing just dot com and uh it did not work for me so i'm not really sure why that was the case um let me try that. Nope, still nothing. That's weird. Um, so yeah, that's not looking too hopeful. But um, they're very active, and there's a bunch of videos and stuff over on their Facebook page. Here's like a frequently asked questions thing, which I'm not going to watch this whole thing, but it's like 50 minutes. So if you want to, you can. Looks like they're uh, they might be I playing some it. of the FAQs. Um, just ones that hit home. Uh, the game will be delivered at the end of June 2020 uh languages that the game will be in will be in french english and german awesome um are there group retailer pledge uh there is not a kickstarter exclusive so the retailer pledge will be meaningless however exot games has created a full benefit process for store that wants to become a partner store um a lot of kickstarter specific questions on here um 
let's see. It looks like the game is being manufactured and printed in China. Um, it's a very text heavy game, so you do have to understand how to read the languages. Uh, I, I thought you were going to stop there. You have to understand how to read. Okay. No, no. It's just that <laughs> if, you're, if it's not available in your native tongue, sure, you're... that's going to be quite difficult. These games are impossible to understand in your native language. So right. <laughs> it, right. these, there's always such like a high learning curve, uh, especially with something that looks like you could have 4,500 pieces. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm sure this, this manual will be pretty big to read. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, sounds exciting. Can't wait. Yeah, but uh, that's really all we have for you today. Um, a somewhat shorter rendition, but if you guys want a little insight into our other conversation, we actually did this slightly already. We covered some of the topics here in a little bit lighter fashion over on a YouTube live stream, which I probably already mentioned in the, earlier in the show. But um, yeah, we it was just something we tested out, you know, live streaming these maybe in the future. Um, not an announcement or anything. We'll... we'll We'll do the official fanfare thing if we ever get around to it. We'll just, we'll, no, no, we'll just, we'll just kind of crap it out. It'll just happen once. Actually, like we just did tonight, right? It was, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we're thinking it. about it. We'll, know. we'll figure it out. <laughs> we're testing the waters on like doing a live stream of The Wire from start to finish so you guys can see the products that we're talking about, see the things behind us, actually get both of us on camera. Um, it should be pretty interesting if we can make it work, but... Um, We'll, we'll do that sometime in the future. No date on that just yet. But go watch our other one. I'm in the video. You can hear Aaron's voice. You can see what we're talking about. So they're always a lot of fun. They feel like a performance. It's great. But yeah, man, we covered a lot of stuff today. So thank you for joining me, man. Uh, anywhere people can follow you around uh, this time around or anything you've been working on? Uh, you can follow me at Aaron D. Beyer over on Twitter. Um, I will reply to you and, and stuff. Uh <laughs> You can go check out uh, Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw in 3D. Maybe somewhere overseas. <laughs> I don't think it got a North American release in 3D, but I know no. we're in some of the overseas markets. So uh, if you're overseas and you have the opportunity to hit in 3D, go check it out. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. So, um, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Well, thanks again, man. Let's go uh, head out of here. Yeah, for sure. Have a good one. Take it easy. Thank you guys so much for listening to the 203rd episode of the Jurassic Park podcast. Thank you so much to Aaron. Um, man, you make so much possible here. I love every episode of The Wire and, and the fact that you joined me for the uh, live stream this week. That was like a marathon recording session. We we jumped into the uh, the live you know, thing and we the live stream was just like on a whim. I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if people can hear me. But they did, and it was awesome. People were really digging it. You know, there was a lot of people in the chat that were like, this is awesome. You got to do more stuff like this. So I think we will. Um, and I love The Wire. And we're, like I said, we're going to be trying to transition The Wire into a full YouTube segment. So you'll be able to see the visuals that we're talking about. See us both as we're talking, unfiltered, unscripted, unedited. And then you'll get to also hear it here on the on the uh, podcast i'm getting all my platforms mixed up you'll hear it here on the podcast as well so it's not going to disappear from the podcast but we're going to work on trying to get that into a youtube uh format so you guys can enjoy it in in multiple fashions so i'm excited about the future of the jurassic wire it's gonna be fun but speaking about the future i just wanted to let you guys know the jurassic wire uh this episode right now will be the last episode for a few weeks i'm taking a few weeks off i'll get back to you guys um I'm not too sure yet what the exact date is, but sometime mid to late September, we'll be back with some new episodes, kicking off the spooky season with you guys. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I just, I'm just i taking a few weeks off. That was kind of the, um, the initiative here behind the whole hiatus that I took earlier this year. It was basically to say, you know, we're going to be able to do this whenever we want to. Take a few weeks, take some time to relax, uh, refresh, re recharge, do what we got to do. And then we'll get back to you guys as soon as we can. So it's just going to be a few short weeks, not like last time. Last time was like several months. It was like literally like four to five months. So that is not happening. I promise you guys that. Just give me a few weeks here 
and we'll get back right into more episodes of the Jurassic Park podcast. We'll pick it up with episode 204. It'll, it'll sound like nothing ever happened. We didn't miss a beat. So I, I'm excited to dive back in when the time comes. Like I said, mid to late September, we'll be back with new episodes for you guys. But why don't we go ahead and dive into our review segment? So, you know, you've got you got a few weeks here to leave some reviews, some five-star reviews for, you, for the podcast. We'd really appreciate it if you guys took a, a second. I know we offer you guys hours worth of content. All we're asking is just two minutes. Just go ahead to Apple Podcasts. Leave us that five-star review. Write a little message if you want to, and I'll read it here on the podcast. So today we've got... A new one for you guys. This is this is <laughs> this is pretty funny because last week I'm like, you know what? You guys better leave a review or else. And uh, the grumpy bagel here took it seriously. So <laughs> this one says, "My review under duress." <laughs> uh, and the and the actual review says, "But seriously." I have just discovered this podcast and I am hooked. I've been a fan of the Jurassic franchise for a long time, but have only recently gotten into the fandom. This show is a great way to find and connect with amazing and creative people involved. Everyone, keep listening. Yeah, Grumpy Bagel. You know, wait, are you like the Boss Bagel guy? Is that that who this is? Are you under duress right now? It's okay. I'm I'm sorry. I wasn't mean I didn't mean to force you guys into writing reviews. I was kindly asking with a little like little fight like behind my words. So that was just a joke. You guys are good. I don't care. It's all in good fun. And I really appreciate the grumpy bagel here taking a second to leave that review. I uh I still find it so fascinating, you know, just to hear each and every person that's like, um, I just found the podcast. You know, I, I find that so exhilarating to be honest like to to see that people are discovering the show and i think you guys are the are the reason because of that with these reviews with the fact that you all reach out on twitter or facebook or instagram and you you keep the conversation rolling and uh you you make it possible for others to discover cool things i know i just said that this podcast is the cool thing um but i think it is i think it is cool and you know when you're able to celebrate something that you love that's pretty cool, right? I think that's cool. I know it is embarrassing, and I, I talk about that all the time. Like when I actually, uh, you know, meet people in person, or you know, tell somebody that I've known a little while, "Hey guys, I have a podcast, and it's about Jurassic Park." I know it's dorky, it's you know whatever, but it isn't. It, it's it's really it's really cool, and I think it's it's a great community. Like uh, Grumpy Bagel here said, amazing people to connect with, creative people. That is like the number one thing. You just, you realize that, that like these movies in general, like, uh, you know, big time movies like this even make people so darn creative. And I think that is that that passion shines through here on this podcast, whether it's, you know, my passion, you know, being creative with this show, doing what I want to do with the show. Or everybody that comes in with a new, a new segment or a voicemail or the guests that we have in the, in the visitor center or whatnot. Like it's it, the passion just shines straight through the podcast. And I, I love that. And, and even today, you know, when we talk about our spotlight in the Jurassic Wire, we talk about Mr. Classic Jurassic, like there's obviously passion behind that as well. And each and every person out there doing amazing things and everybody wanting to be a part of something. I find that pretty special, and uh, yeah, this franchise is awesome, and it's certainly one of those franchises that you just, you you didn't realize there were so many people, and there's so many awesome people, creative people, and like-minded people, just like you, and uh, I think, I think you know, not speaking too highly of, of the show or whatnot, but I think this show has certainly done that. It's made it possible for like-minded people to come together and uh, appreciate that, and just just to be creative and that's all i want and uh, i'm glad so everybody keep listening take grumpy bagels advice keep listening i hope you do i hope you like it so i'm gonna take this mentality and kind of go into my uh outro here this this little segment that i do usually i want you guys to connect with some amazing person or a creative person whoever it may be in the community that you've never talked to before that maybe you've you've seen or you've liked or retweeted or whatnot i I want you to to actually go ahead and go to their page comment on it start the conversation 
because that that's the way that this fandom grows into something truly special you know that that's really the only way fandom grows that's what we rely on here at the podcast we really we don't do any kind of like advertising or anything like that we rely on you guys so go do that because that's what people really rely on and especially creative people they rely on people to not just passively look they rely on people to actually engage so please go ahead and do that engage this week with somebody that you've never talked to before i think that's pretty cool And, you know, I'm always afraid. I'm always afraid when I do that same thing. You know, I I try to reach out to people every now and then. And I'm always like, oh, are they going to respond to me? Do they think I'm like weird or, you know, strange or dorky or something like that? You know, but I think most people are just like you. You know, that's the thing. So people are pretty cool for the most part. So have no worries. Go out there, contact somebody, connect with somebody that you've never connected with here in a Jurassic community or, or other communities for that matter. Just get involved and have some good fun. So that's what I'm asking you this week. Do that, and I think the community will be a much better place. So thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. I really appreciate each and every one of you. I'm going to go ahead and roll the outro. Thanks, everybody. Saddle up. Let's get this movable feast underway. Please give us a follow on Twitter, at Jurassic Park Pod, and myself, at Brad Jost. Also on Facebook and Instagram, at Jurassic Park Podcast. Don't forget to join the Jurassic Park Podcast group on Facebook. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, our website, or wherever else podcasts are found. So please be sure to subscribe. Also, don't miss our toy hunts and reviews, in-depth bonus content, live streams, gameplay, events and theme park coverage, and so much more on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. We will read your reviews at the end of every episode, so please be sure to spare no expense. Don't miss us on the web at JurassicParkPodcast.com, where you'll find today's episode show notes, wonderful articles, bios from our contributors, and so much more. If you want to get a hold of us, you can fill out the contact form on our website or email us, JurassicParkPod at gmail.com. We're always looking for new segments, contributors, mailbag submissions, or anybody who just wants to say hello. Feel free to call our voicemail line at any time to leave us a message. That number is 732-825-7763. Thanks for listening, and enjoy! Five minutes. Drop what you're doing and leave now.